these are the two ingredients, I would say, uh, of the blockchain. So one ingredient is cryptography uh, and the other ingredient is uh, fault tolerant systems. So you want systems which can survive kind of failures by, by parts of the system. And these two things together, in my point of view, are the blockchain. So my name is uh, Roger Wattenhofer, I'm a professor at ETH Zurich. Uh, my area is roughly distributed systems and since a few years I'm interested in Bitcoin, blockchain, this kind of area. This was always a somewhat academic topic, nobody really cared about these things. And uh, some years back I was you know, encouraged to attend some fintech meetings. And there it seemed that uh, they have a deep interest in this topic and, uh, and I noticed the connection. And this is maybe one of the first times in my life as a professor where I actually do something as a professor, which turns out to be very interesting from a, you know, not only academic point of view. So I get a lot of requests uh, every day, one uh, to, to talk about this topic or to, to chat with companies about this topic. Some people think that the blockchain is exactly equal to Bitcoin and that's one definition which I can live with, I don't, I don't mind it. But personally I think this is a much older topic. This is in the really like 40 years ago in the 80s uh, people started to be interested in build systems which can survive in some sense different types of uh, faults. And faults might include something like messages being lost or machines crashing. Or also in the other extreme, like machines behaving maliciously, they're trying to, you know, some machines are kind of like uh, hacked by adversary and you still want to have a system which works. This is an old topic in some sense and not very new, uh, unfortunately. You know, he combined the two things to have a fault tolerant system where you can inject transactions to it. And the system will tell you, you know, which transactions happened in what order. That's kind of the blockchain. And then nobody can cheat anymore and say, you know, but I never wanted to send you this money because it's somewhere in the history of this uh, ledger or of this uh, information system. Blockchain is for me, or the way my book uses it in some sense, is just, you know, a, a wrapper which tells you that several people together can agree on what transactions actually happened, in which order. And you can implement this in various ways. And some have advantages because they are more efficient, faster, they use less resources. Some have advantages that you can do it with millions of people. Some have advantages that you can use the blockchain even if there's really bad guys around which want to corrupt the system. And that's sort of the spectrum there, uh, where, where research is going into and research is interested in. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, offers things which normal banks wouldn't offer you so far. So, for instance, uh, you have a currency you can trust without trusting anybody in particular somehow. So that's something, of course, which is very exciting for libertarians. But that's not why Swiss banks, for instance, would be interested in Bitcoin or blockchain. They seem to be interested in having this ledger, this, in having this distributed system, which is, uh, you know, fault tolerant and safe in terms of cryptography and security. But uh, this could, is something they could have had many years ago already. So I don't know why now... Uh, you have this. Maybe they feel that they're, you know, have to be modern. That's that's my only guess. <laughs> we can build systems where you don't have to trust anybody anymore. You can always be sure you get your money back. That's a huge advantage over the current system. And I, for once, would like to go to a bank which offers me this deal, right? And not uh, the deal that I currently get where I kind of have to trust them. The word blockchain might vanish. That's uh, probably true. At some point people call it distributed ledger or just distributed system and th that's fine. Uh, there's a huge hype for the word blockchain right now. That's why I call the book Blo Blockchain Book. However, uh, I should say there's something deeper here and that's not a hype. And the deep thing is that technology will change some kind of industries. 
so people call this this digitalization i don't like the term at all because for me it means something else but i i truly believe that you know uh, computing and engineering will change uh, business blockchain definitely or distributed systems i would like to say definitely will change industries uh you know uh, it was never clear to me why we need so many we have so many jobs in switzerland for instance in in finance uh, in banking uh, i uh, i'm very pessimistic about these jobs and i won't tell my children to study these jobs i think they're better off starting a technical degree math cs engineering something like that and they learn the tools to build these systems and i think these tool builders will be important in the next decade or so yeah, so i don't think blockchain is a revolution i think it has been done forever like for 40 years which is really forever in computer science in my domain uh, so both uh, parts both ingredients the security and the distributed systems have been around since the 70s basically since the early 70s and this is not the revolution but the revolution in some sense or the evolution is that uh, that jobs will change uh, that's something i believe in that jobs will be you know digitized in some sense computers will do a lot of the manual labor that we still see in this kind of service domains today that's that's something i i believe will be coming and it's of course uh, you know society's uh, job to figure out what to what to do about this and now you can have your dystopia or your utopia depending on how society decides yeah. movies kind of talk about it and books talk about it from time to time right so there's good books which uh, which look at this and there's movies which make sense in that domain but it's just not the politicians the politicians say new jobs will come for sure and uh, they will replace all jobs and that's the part i'm not so sure about okay uh, but you know if you ask people who know a little bit about this it's about 50 50 what they say 50 percent about say new jobs will come and they'll replace all jobs and 50 percent will say that we kind of see a disruption in this in the, in the kind of working society uh, and I'm on the side that I will I believe a, a disruption will come. As soon as the machines are as good as the humans, why should not they not have the machines decide? So this will come. This is a bit a different topic. This is more the topic of uh, deep learning or artificial intelligence. But this will disrupt, you know, the society even more than than blockchain and bitcoin for sure because that's that will replace so many jobs uh, which are basically doing basic work right now white collar work but but basically computing little things and machines can do amazing things these days already and there you have the development just in the past few years it's the same thing as for the blockchain in some sense it's the past few years which made sure that things are going to come uh, it's already amazing you know if you if you listen to google's uh, speech uh, synthesis these guys, you know, I wish we could type this interview and let them a robot talk for me. It would be much, much better. <laughs>